Hey everybody, today's topic is the number one single off the Folklore album, Cardigan, which debuted at number one on the Hot 100. And coincidentally, something I didn't mention in my previous video, Taylor set a record, no artist has ever done this. No other artist has ever debuted with their album being number one on the Hot 200, which is the album chart, Billboard album chart, and at the same time debuted number one on the Hot 100, which is the singles chart, and it was Cardigan that deb debuted at number one on the Hot 100. So she's just setting records right and left with, with this album. And we're gonna do a deep dive into the song Cardigan, and I hope you enjoy it and stay with me. So I'm Tim Wolf, I'm a Nashville recording artist, singer, songwriter. There's a link down below in the description. You can get a link to my music. And also there's a link there where you can get some downloads, some free downloads of my my last single, which is Born in South Dakota, and also another single, Castle Built of Cards. Okay, so let's, do, let's dive right into this. Now this song was co-written with her new collaborator, Aaron Desner, who is best known for his work in the alternative rock band, The Nationals. And I believe, I have to admit, I'm not that familiar with his work, <clears throat> but he's a producer. And she, based on some of the articles that I read, she had seen him at a concert and approached him and asked him to work with her on a new album. And what artist or producer would say no to having one of the, one of the, the, the top artists in the world right now and with a long staying power come up to you and say, I'd like to work with you. So it was a huge, I, I feel a huge up for, for Aaron is probably a highlight of his career so far and probably gave him a huge leg up on for his future career because it's always about leveling leveling up and, and working at higher levels. And kudos to him because he delivered. He did a phenomenal job. And they worked together on 11 songs together. And the first song they did together, based on what I've read there, and there is a post that he had put out on Twitter which was a screenshot, and I'll put it in the video, a screenshot of him sending her, apparently he sent her a, an instrumental track and she replied with excitement on how excited she was about the track. And then at three in the morning of that same day or the next morning, or she was still working, she sent the first, basically the first verse we can see in the screenshot which is essentially the first verse unchanged with the reference to the high heels and the cobblestones. And also there was a uh, iPhone memo of her first demo of the song. And that was available apparently for the first week or the first few days after the single dropped in July. Now this was back in April when this exchange took place. And what's really interesting is that on the very same day she posted a selfie on her social media saying not much going on. And in reality, there was a lot going on because she was writing this incredible song and starting to write this incredible album. There are three songs on the album that as Taylor has, well, Taylor has alluded to a trilogy of three lovers. And based on all that I could research that I can find, she never really discussed which song she was alluding to, left it to her listeners to research that and try to figure out. And I, based on all the blogs that I've read, it appears that the consensus is those three songs are Cardigan, Betty, and August. There are three characters whose names are mentioned in the songs, and that's James, Inez, and Betty. Now, Inez is mentioned in the song Betty, and although the one blog that I read said that Inez was the third character, when I read the lyrics, it doesn't specifically say that. It said that you heard a rumor. James is speaking to Betty, and he said, you heard a rumor from Inez, and you can't trust what she says, but in this case, you can. Now, that could have been just another person in their circle, in their apparently high school, because in the song, he says, I'm only 17. So this apparently when the song Betty is referring to when they're only 17. And apparently the also the part in August was also when they were 17 or roughly, roughly that age. So interesting enough, James and Enos are the names of the offspring of Taylor Swift's friends, Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. So she's incorporating 
the, the children of her real life friend circle, which is really cool. And I'm sure those kids are just super excited about that. What, what it's about, apparently, you can each one of those songs in Betty, even though Taylor's singing it, it's from James, the perspective of James, who is the, is the guy who chased two different girls and it was Betty and Inez or another person that we don't know the name of. And he was apparently dating Betty. And and that's what the song Cardigan is about, is when James and Betty were together. And then he left her and she pulled up in her car. Let's say it was Inez. And he got into her car. And that's, that's talked about in Betty. And it's also talked about in August. And then... Uh, the character in August, in August, Inez talks about how she never really had him and she lost him. And then in Betty, he talks about going knocking on her door when she's at a party and he's hoping that she will receive him even though all her friends will be looking at, at them and he hopes that she'll kiss him in the garden and not tell him to F off. So that's the triangle. Now, Cardigan is from the perspective as we best can determine, is from Betty's perspective. She talks about what it was like to have that first love and all the nostalgia behind that. And the song basically talking about how she probably didn't feel, had the, the most self-worth as a lot of teenagers don't. And she said, when I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed, you put me on and said I was your favorite. And the, actually, the cardigan is also mentioned in the lyrics of the song August. So it, it's all tied together. And apparently in the videos, if you look carefully, there's even more Easter eggs. But I'm more focused on the actual songwriting because that's really what interests me. Now, the song is written, Wikipedia says it's in C minor. I don't, that's, that's not correct. It's as near as I can tell, the, the tonal center of the song is in E flat. And in the, the verses, it goes, it's a 2-5 it's a progression, 2-5, two, 2-5, five, two, five, which is a very standard, the second chord, the two minor chord going to the five chord, which is a very common jazz progression. So I, I really like that, that that's being used. Now, apparently, based on the text messages, he sent her the background chords, and she did what's called top lining over the top, which is a very common modern songwriting technique where someone develops a beat and perhaps a chord structure, and that then is given to a top liner or a songwriter who then comes up with lyrics and a melody over the top of that. It's a very common modern songwriting technique, and it's apparently the way that at least Cardigan was written. Taylor immediately started just spitting out you can see in the text message that she just immediately started spitting out phenomenal lyrics. And there's a lot of lyrics in this song. The song is almost four minutes long, and it's got a lot of lyrics. It's 130 beats per minute, which is fairly fast for a, a, a ballad, melancholy-type ballad like this. But like I said, it's in the key of E flat, which is a pretty evocative key. It's it, it I think I feel each key has its own type of feeling, and E flat has is a good choice for a melancholy type song. And we look at the lyrics. In the first verse, she goes, vintage tea, brand new phone, high heels on cobblestones. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. So it's, uh, she's rhyming the phones, the phones and the stones. And then the, the refrain, when we are young, they assume you are nothing, when you're young. And then sequin smile, black lipstick, sensual politics. She's rhyming the lipstick and the politics. So it's an AA refrain, AA refrain, which is the rhyming scheme in the verses. And then in the chorus, I knew you dancing in your Levi's, drunk under a streetlight, I. And so Levi's and streetlight. And then I knew you, hand under my sweatshirt, baby kiss it better, right. And the right rhymes with the I. Then I felt like I was an old cardigan under someone's bed, and bed and cardigan is a rhyme. You put me on and said I was your favorite. So that's the rhyme scheme. And then she goes to verse two, a friend to all is a friend to none. Chase two girls, lose the one. None and one are rhyming. And then she goes back to the refrain. When you are young, they assume you know nothing. And then she immediately goes back into the chorus. Then I knew you. But she changed the, the lines. The chorus isn't the same playing hide and seek instead of dancing in your Levi's. So the, each chorus is different words, which is a really cool writing technique. It's more much really advanced writing technique where you change the chorus. Choruses generally in 
in traditional songwriting training, they say keep your choruses the same so that it's supposed to be a chorus so people can, can sing along. And if you change it, it's going to be more difficult to sing along. But the second time you sing it, the, the traditional way of thinking is then people know it and they can sing along. But she doesn't do that. I mean, if you're good, you know what the rules are and then you break them. Not that, and, and a lot of great songwriters do that. They do things that are not textbook. And uh, Taylor is certainly at the level where she knows where and how to do that. And so, I mean, some very evocative lyrics here. You do scars are on my scars. That's internal rhyme, stars and scars. Now I'm bleeding to kiss in cars and downtown bars. Again, internal rhymes, cars and bars uh, was all we needed. This is in what I would call the bridge. And so that's all we needed. And then now I'm bleeding. So those two are rhymed. And you drew stars around my scars are rhyming. And then she goes back into the chorus. Because I knew you stepping on the last train again. Change the chorus up again. The, line, the lyric is different. Mark me like a blood stain. I mean, that is, what, a, what a, a lyric that is. I mean, a blood stain is something, especially if you're wearing a light colored uh, garment. It's a very evocative lyric and it's producing a lot of emotion just by hearing that line. It, it creates a picture. And then she goes, Peter losing Wendy. She's re Wendy, she's referring to Peter Pan. And leaving like a father, running like water. I mean, th this, these lyrics are just so incredible. I mean, just by hearing them, you, you get... A, an image, they create images just that are flowing by really quickly and they almost flow by too quickly. You almost have to sit down, listen to it over and over and possibly have a lyric sheet like I'm doing and, and, and look at it. It's just, it's just really high level, really advanced uh, lyrical songwriting in, in my opinion. And uh, the smell of smoke would hang around this long because I knew, and then, well, first of all, in the refrain in the first verses where when you are young, they assume you know nothing. And then she goes in what I would call the, the last section, which is really maybe a post-chorus or, or a ending refrain. She, she changes it up and every, every line rhymes with each other. Tattoo, kiss, what ifs, uh, around this long when I was young, uh, longest time, grocery line, uh, expired porch light, and... Whereas before it was, when you were young, they assume you know nothing. And now she's saying, I knew everything when I was young. So contrasting, contrasting that. And she even says that she knew that he would come back to her standing on my front porch light. And as if, in fact, the song Betty is about the, the trilogy of the three lovers, he does come back and stand on her porch and knock on her door and expect her to kiss him in front of all her stupid friends, he says. And, and then he says, I'm only 17, I'm only 17. So to me, there's a lot of living here for people that are 17, but it's just a lot of living for that age. But people do experience a lot by, by that age. So the commercial performance for the song Cardigan had debuted number one on the global Spotify songs chart with over 7.7 .7 million streams garnering the biggest opening day of a song by a solo artist or female in 2020. Uh, it, it, like I said, it debuted number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It dethroned Rockstar by Baby, And uh, it earned uh, Taylor her sixth number one single in the U.S. and second number one debut following Shake It Off. So it's only her second debut single at number one. And like I said, she became the first artist ever to debut at number one on both the Hot 100 and the Billboard 200 charts in the same week. The single was joined in the top 10 by her other songs from this album, The One and Exile, and increased her number of top 10, top 10 hits to 28. She's had 28 top 10 hits, and she's still so young with so much more ahead of her. Anyway, extended her record as the woman with the most top 10 debuts to 18. Uh, it's the first solo song by a female artist to top the chart since I Want You for Christmas, or All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey in 2019. And in its opening week, Cardigan earned 34 million U.S. streams, 12.7 million in radio airplay, and sold 71,000 copies. And it became becoming the most streamed and the best-selling song of the week, dated July 30th. And then the next week, it dropped to eight. So, which was disappointing because it didn't stay at number one. It was only there for one week and it dropped to eighth. But in that week, it also topped six other Billboard charts, the streaming songs, the alternative streaming songs, digital song sales, alternative digital song sales, hot alternative songs, 
and hot rock and alternative song charts. There's a lot of charts in Billboard. It extended her all-time record as the artist with the most number one hits on the digital song ch sales charts to 20. So, you know, she continues to rack up the, rec the records and she continues to just, just, just kill it. Credits on the song, Taylor Swift was the vocals and a songwriter and Aaron Dessner is the other songwriter and he also was a producer Songwriter, engineer, recording engineer, drum programmer. He played the bass. He played electric guitar. He played Mellotron. He played piano, percussion, and synthesizer. So he basically did the instrumental backing. Benjamin Lance played a synthesizer. Uh, Yuki Numata Resnick played the violin and viola. James McAllister came in and did some more drum programming. Clarice Jensen played the cello. So she had some actual stringed instruments on there. And then a couple other en engineers, four more engineers that had credits on the song. So there you have it, that's Cardigan, and it had some rave reviews and some of the comments about it that I really loved. Here it says, this was I think in Time Magazine, I believe this is where I got this, Taylor being Taylor, always destined to conjure up a powerful reaction, and that's true. She's always, I think, been treated unfairly. In the past year, her public dispute with music manager Scooter Braun over her music catalog, and I'll dig into that a little bit. My Tears Ricochet, I believe, is about that situation, and I want to do that on a separate video and raise questions about the ownership artists have over the music they create. And Taylor, moves that Taylor makes really has influence for other lesser artists because she can throw her weight around and, and make the industry. The industry is tough. It's, it's tough, it's vicious, and, and Taylor has in the past made moves that were beneficial, not necessarily only to her, but to other artists. She has a lot of generosity to, to help other artists pull them up prior to the Scooter Braun thing, according to this article, it says she often drew tabloid scrutiny. Yeah, yeah, right, duh. And her response has often been to write it all out, address past relationships, excavate heartbreak and frustration, and insist on resilience. But the reviewer said, folklore is a bit more foggy. It relies more on smart songwriting and less on speculation about her personal life and complicated visual clues and because of that, it suggests that it's bound for a long shelf life. And that's what I alluded to in, th th I like this quote because I believe it's true. That's what I alluded to in my previous video, that in my opinion, my two cents opinion, that this is a kind of album that has legs. This is the kind of album that decades later, people are gonna be listening to, not just because of where they were the summer of 2020, which is, this, those of us who've lived through 2020 are definitely going to remember this summer. Hopefully 2021 is less memorable and then we can look back, hey, you remember that summer of 2020? Uh, but it'll be because this is a phenomenal song that will stand up 20, 30, 40 years later that people will pull that out. Like they do the Beatles. People pull out the Beatles and listen to them and don't feel it's dated. And people that weren't even a glimmer in their parents' eyes when the Beatles songs were released still love and adore and listen to the Beatles. This is the type of the quality of, of songwriting on this album. And if Taylor continues that and continues her ascent, I believe that th this is just the beginning. That's just my opinion. So I've gone on long enough. I hope I've delivered something of interest to you and, and entertained you. Uh, it's Taylor that is delivering the goods and I'm just trying to review it. I, I hope that if you enjoyed this video, leave comments below as to any comments on what you'd like me to do next. I'm planning on doing Ricochet for sure. My Tears Ricochet, excuse me, is the full title of the song. I might do that one next, uh, but there's a, so much to dig into here in such great songwriting. And I know this is album has been out for a couple of months. It was released in July, and I'm doing this this out this video in September. But because this album has so much legs, I believe it's worth looking at, even though it's it's got a great it's got a long, long shelf life. So I'm Tim Wolf, and we'll see you next time. Hey everybody, this is Tim Wolf. Thank you so much for watching my video. Please go to the link down below in the description. There's a Bentley link. Listen to my music at Spotify. I appreciate it very much. It means a lot to an artist if you follow them. If you would be kind enough to like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with your friends. Finally, be sure to subscribe. And also there are other videos on this screen that you can watch. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much.